Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build and use a melter, um, which is a great uh, substitute if you don't want to use a smeltery, um, but it's also a great way to increase the use of your smeltery, to make it run faster. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you those steps here. Uh, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button. That way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. Okay, so uh, today we're going to be using a couple different components. I've already got them down here, but we'll show you how to build them. We're going to start with the melter itself. And the melter is four advanced plating, three nether brick, one machine chassis, and one servo mechanism. Now, for this to be at better capacity, you're going to want to use some speed upgrades. Speed upgrades for this machine are four lapis, four redstone, and a weighted pressure plate. Now, you're also going to need some uh, liquid storage. I use metal drums. You can use barrels as well, but uh, the metal drums I like better in case you're doing anything that's fluid, that's combustible, that might catch the wood on fire. Um, so, for a wooden barrel is the first thing you need, then two weighted pressure plates, and six iron plates. But again, you don't have to use the metal drum. This will also work for a wooden barrel. You're also going to need a fluid transfer node, uh, the wireless one here, which is the way I like to do it, which is four iron bars, two sponge, a gold block, and two prismarine shards. And then, of course, you'll need at least one GPS, uh, which is a stick, piece of paper, and then something blue, light blue dye, blue powder, uh, blue liquid, any of those will work. All right, so we're also going to be doing a couple other things uh, for our power source to run our melter. I'm using, as you can see, a battery down here and a um, energy extraction cable that is being powered by solar power, which I have over there. It's nighttime. There's a lot of solar stored up. I'm also using uh, chest and item extraction cables. So you can see I have those there already. So for a melter, um, just like with a um, smeltery, We'll take certain items, such as ambers and such, and it will melt those into a fluid form just by placing them in this block. To see what recipes are available, you can just click on the center arrow here, which says Show Recipes. You'll see there's 101 different things. and You can cycle through those. A lot of things turn into a lot of other things, so they melt down. Um, so this is a great way of melting down a lot of items um, and, and getting that liquid form of that. So let's just start off with uh, an example here. We're going to use some iron amber. So I put some iron amber in here. As you can see, it is starting to melt. Now that's pretty slow. So we're going to go our health and we're going to grab ourselves some of those speed upgrades. Load those in there. As you can see, it sped it up. Now I didn't show the recipe for energy upgrades, but we'll look at those too. Would help if I could spell. So if you go to an energy upgrade, which is uh, four crushed quartz or obsidian dust or pulverized obsidian and a gold weighted pressure plate. Um, that will help also speed up your process because when you have a large amount of, um, if you put say 64 energy upgrades, that means it uses less power to process it. And then the speed upgrades causes the processing itself to go much faster. Now, if you do 64 and 64, um, a lot of times I find that the power still has a hard time keeping up with it, depending on your power source. Um, unless you have something super heavy. So I like to do kind of like a 32, 33 versus 64 combo. I feel that that moves pretty quickly. Okay, and you can run um, that automatically by just throwing some more amber up into that chest with an item extraction node. We'll just keep reloading it until that is full. And the melter will hold 16 MB or millibuckets. So next thing we're going to do here, that's a great way, like I said, to, to kind of get that stuff melting fast. But if we take ourselves a fluid extraction cable and put it on the side, it is then going to move that molten iron into our metal drum. Okay, now that's gonna allow it to continue to run beyond that original um, maximum megawicks we saw, millibuckets, and allow it to then fill up into this drum, which is gonna give you a large amount of storage uh, for, for fluids themselves. Now, the way I say that this is really handy for um, increasing the speed of your smeltery is if we take a little bit of iron amber, and we go over here, and we put a couple of these in, 
you can see that those are melting very, very slowly. Now, granted, depending on the size of your smelter, you can do a lot at once. So it's still great to use your smeltery as a normal status. You know, just normally fill it. But if we want to make it go much, much faster, and what we're going to do over here is we're going to take our GPS marker. Now, as you can see, I already have a fluid transfer node above my bucket there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my fluid extraction cable, put that on top so it feeds the fluid up into that. As you can see, it's right now at 10,000 of 10,000. Now, over on my smeltery, I have put another metal drum above one of the smeltery drains without a faucet on it. That's important. Okay. If we go and oop, we use our GPS by shift right click on the barrel, do the right thing here. That's going to link our GPS to that barrel. And now when I go over here and I put it inside my fluid transfer node, you can see that the iron is now going over into this barrel. So the, everything that's smelting over there is going into this one. Now all you have to do is take your fluid transfer node and drop that on the bottom. And that is going to feed that directly into your smeltery. You can see 24 blocks. It went in there very, very quickly which is a lot faster than smelting it within the smeltery itself, which you then can have faucets coming off other drains and pouring it out into the different shapes and items such as ingots and such that you need. This is really handy because you can have multiple melters running and have a different one of these drums to the different smeltery drains. So like for example, I could put a, a, a drum here, drum here and another drum on this end and have all four going in from four different uh, melters and that would drastically increase the amount of speed that I'm smelting things. Now that's really handy with some of the slower melting items. Say for example you wanted to make diamond in a smeltery. Um, of course if you take diamond itself, let's go into the JEI here and show you. If we go and we click on diamond, of course you know you can take the acorns, none of those will make a diamond but you're going to get a lot of resin as well. If you take resin and melt it in a smeltery, you can then pour and cast it into diamonds directly out of that. If you need a lot of them, say 10,000 because you're trying to make a diamond singularity, that's a lot of diamonds. So if you were instead to pour that or get your liquid uh, by putting the res diamond resin in your melter, which is going to speed smelt that, then that would be a much faster way than putting diamond in here itself because diamond, again, smelts very, very slowly normally. Um, there's a lot of items that do. So this is a great way of increasing the speed. And again, it's not real high cost and it's a pretty easy, simple setup. Um, I could have this little setup here, three or four of them running to three or four different um, barrels. In fact, I can even put more drains in here. If I wanted to build this up, I could have drains going all the way up and just drastically have drums all over the outside of this thing, filling it up super, super fast, and then using some automated users and automated systems to pour it out automatically. Uh, if you're not sure how to automate a smeltery itself, I do have a tutorial for that on my channel as well. Uh, definitely recommend checking that out. Um, but that is uh, pretty much how to build and use a melter, and then how to combine that with a smeltery to really, really speed up your smeltery's process. Um, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, uh, please be sure to throw those down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer those as quickly as I can, as well as if you have any recommendations or suggestions for other tutorials that you'd like to see in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Always looking for more recommendations. This was one that was given to me showing how to use a melter. So uh, that's going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.